Hi everybody, I'm Chris Adamo from The Balloon Crew in Sydney, Australia. Now this is just a very impromptu uh, video of uh, the design process that I undertake for um, you know some of the sketches I create for clients. So it's unscripted, um, I just do it as I work because I don't have too much time today. Let me just push the record button and see what happens. So what I do often is create uh, 3D rendered sketches overlaid over the image of the venue or the location. Um, so, you know, it's great because it gives me the option, opportunity to look at the rigging points and, and create designs that work within their environment. And I'll often, you know, save it as I go and change it around A, B, C, you know, three different options. And then I can use that with measurements to price. Um, so I'll give my clients a few options with, with different prices. And it's, it's, it's so beneficial. Um, uh, I do it whenever I can. Sometimes I allocate about 20 minutes per, per job to, to design. Um, I use a program called Adobe Illustrator, which is this. Now it's expensive and it is hard to use, but you can use other software like PowerPoint, Microsoft Word even. Um, so bear with me, Let, let's just go through a process. So the client um, has a brief, which is Grinch Whoville. Uh, so just type that in, like I've read the book and you know, I know a little bit about it. But through a bit of research, the, the room is quite big, high ceilings. They're looking at a cloud or um, an organic garland like curves throughout the space. Um, so two different options. And with, with that, I might give them a, a few options uh, of each, of the, the garland or the cloud. So, you know, we've sort of agreed on three colours. I'm thinking like a rose, um, lime green for the Grinch, and they want a blue. So... Um, back to uh, our website here. I will select, uh, you know, the fashion line. And so what I've got here is just the last sketch that I drew. Um, but uh, I just load that up again because it has the uh, template sort of in there already. Maybe the Robin's Egg Blue, I think, look, you know, like nice, fun, strong colors and, uh, and the rose. I think those three will work together. I like copying and pasting and, and just looking at them together. Even when I'm doing a quote without the sketch, I always sort of put them next to each other, get a feel for how they're going to look. So what we do is uh, that photo there is locked. So object, uh, oh, it's in here. Just going to delete that. And I'm going to grab the photo of the room. That one. Just working here, by the way. Download. And paste it in. Okay. So this is the ceiling that we are quoting on. Uh, that looks good. So if I just, like normally I don't do this, but just so it's easier for you guys to see, I'm gonna create a layer mask in the, um, in the space. Cause when I save it, it clips this space here. Okay, but then the last thing I do is I will uh, lock that layer. So I can't edit it, I can't select it anymore. Um, now, I'm not going to teach you how to use Illustrator. I'm just showing you the process that I go through. And if you've got skills, fantastic. If you don't, maybe you could um, look at learning how to do it. All right, so now two ways, which I'll show you each, as to how I um, create the balloons. One is I select the circular ellipse tool, move it over the balloon. Oops. Uh, move it down a bit. It's over most of it, so we get the... Um, like the, the white sort of reflective qualities uh, make a clipping mask. So I'll show you again. Select them both, make clipping mask. I know you can do this in um, PowerPoint and a few different Microsoft Word software. Um, so we're just clipping the part that we want and removing the white space. 
Okay, so that works perfectly. You know, you can select them, duplicate them, resize them, and you know, move them around to create structure. The other thing I can do is over here, just give it a little bit of opacity, a little bit of transparency, and that way you can you can start to see how one merges with the other. If it's a crystal balloon, you can give it a lot more opacity and really see how that merges there. Um, but these are fashion balloons. I don't want to give it too much opacity. I think it was just about 94. Just gives it a bit of fun detailing. Okay, so that's fine. And that's how I used to do it all. These days, what I try to do if I have time, especially if it's one color, is um, I'll actually create a circle with a bit more of a um, gradient render. So the first thing I do is I select the colors. Um, so that's the, that's the green. I'll move it to my swatch. And let's select the pink rose. Now the rubber's egg. Okay. And now I'm going to create a circle and using the gradient tool, uh, where is gradient over here, and type radial, Oops. now once again, it's all kind of tricky stuff and it's, uh, you know, a lot of experience here, but I'm not showing you how to use Illustrator, I'm just showing you what I do. So the first color, is always a little darker. The middle color, usually the original. This is why I've got them pre-saved in my swatch. Oops. Yeah. And the third color is a little lighter. Let's remove that placement. Okay, and then we can just sort of play around with that. Now, once you've made these colors, you can you can save them for future reference, of course. Okay, so that's one. Now, next over here, I will just change the colors. First is a little little deeper in color, the original, and a lot lighter. Okay. Oops. Now the green. Is that looking it's a bit funny? Maybe this is a bit too dark. Okay, so I'll remove these because this is what I want to work off. I will give it a bit of opacity. Now, I don't have my actual normal microphone, so it might be a little bit crappy this quality, but <clears throat> bear with us. Okay, whatever that was. So now what to do? Well, let's sort of get them in a scale. I'm thinking of creating these in batch colors. So let's start with the cloud design. Well, first I might just save it. Okay, so I'm just gonna copy and paste a bunch of times and resizing as I go. changing the position a little bit, even a little bit of rotation, it moves the shadowing a bit. So now well, let's introduce another color.
The other thing with designing digitally is to make sure that we have a realistic um, positioning. So what I mean by that is the balloon can be in the foreground or the background. See how I'm moving it around? I'll just sort of zoom in a bit. Okay, so, so to me that doesn't really work. The way it'll, it'll be built is this balloon here has to click into the center. Therefore, that is in the foreground. That, that becomes before it. Um, and, you know, a balloon in the back there probably wouldn't stick out like that. It would be encapsulated by the module system. Okay. And so when I copy and paste, I, I usually will just sort of move it around so you don't see any repetition. And then also building, we want to have depth. So something in the background would uh, be smaller. All right. So look, I'm not too fussed about it all just yet. I just want to get some stock into place. Whoops. I think I might just add, make this a little lighter. What have I done? This looks a bit funny. sort of reshape all this a bit. Now we also need to think about, um, like quite often if I'm building with cloud busters, I'll actually put it in place and, you know, I'll look at a, a measurement like a door and, okay, well, that door is two metres, just say this door here. If I knew that door was two metres top to bottom, I will actually place that cloud buster in there and know that if I'm going to place that around here, Right, that's now in perspective or that's in, in uh, relationship to that door as the right size. So now I can come over here knowing that one's two meters and I can place that there. Okay, that's another little tip. But right now I'm just winging it, it's just a basic sort of visual. Um, so when I build clouds, I like to sort of integrate one color into the next. Mind you, most of the time it's a white cloud, but this is a bit of fun. And let's so something at the front will be a bit bigger. talking about that integration here. It might be easier for me to just sort of have a bunch of set colors separate building blocks to work off. Okay, so maybe we could
Add a bit of depth back there. So it's small for depth. So having the big ones forward really gives you that uh, depth perception. I drop this whole thing a tad. Now one other thing you do is just click R to rotate the whole thing up. And we'll get to that when we do the garland version. So I really enjoy this because you can, as you build it, it really gives you some tips on uh, what you want to do in, in the real life. Like when you actually get on site, I've got a sketch that I can now start to see and, and feel, you know, this is what it'll look like if I integrate the colors this way or that way. Might be a bit boring, so just skip <laughs> this video to the end. So I like that little kick the cloud has here. You know, you don't really see that until you put it in place, but it needs to be filled with a bit of mass over here. Presented twice. It's kind of cool. Might just um, might build the blue out a bit. Just to give it, make it look a little flatter. Okay, so get that out of there and move it there. It's looking okay. So I'm going to save this. Now, so that's a cloud example. Let's build uh, the other design, which I'm quite excited to see, to be honest, what it will look like, um, which is a um, more of a, an organic garland with tendrils. So like long uh, um, uh, sort of arms of garland. And I want to separate them now by color. I think it'll look fun rather than the same color, uh, rather than a mix of colors. So I'm trying to do two things at once. I'm a guy, can't talk and design <laughs> at the same time. This might be the most boring video ever. I have no idea. I just really enjoy doing this, so just wanted to share it. So tendril uh, tapered, thick to thin. And 
find, I actually find designing Garland easier because we're going to duplicate it. And it's like that little pivot thing I was telling you about comes into play. So I can go copy paste. So move some things around. So here, I'll select half of it, pivot. Once again, pivot. All right, and then we can just move a few things around. So that was pretty quick, right? And the whole thing actually, I might make a wee bit smaller. So that's the base. I wonder, I wonder what our starting point will be. Let's flip this. Now flipping the, uh, the shadowing, like the, the light is going to be on the other side, but usually it doesn't matter. And it just created a, a, a like a perfect copy of that. So I want to sort of break up the symmetry a bit. So that's kind of cool. What I liked about this idea is it brings it in close you know, to the kids, like you can rig it wherever and just have it like two meters off the ground. And I, f I find, you know, if you can bring a design quite intimate to the space, it you get more value. It's exciting. It's not just a static piece up on the roof. So if it was all the one color, like I just, I would have just used that one garland piece and built off that, keep duplicating. But unfortunately, three colors. No, I, could, I could just change the color, mind you. Actually, I could select this, um, make a copy, and boom. It's a lot faster, actually. See, I used to work in graphic design, so obviously I enjoy this stuff. But more than anything, I find whenever I do it, like there's a couple of, well, I'm not going to talk about money, uh, but there, it's a, it's a good budget, and I, and I want to make sure we, we allocate it correctly. Uh, so, you know, I get excited about the opportunity to build big and, um, uh, you know, make sure we do the right job. So that what are we up to half an hour or something so far, even less that's from absolute nothing to finished. It's uh, it's worth it. And this is multiple designs, right? You could have this done in 10 minutes. Possibly. I'm going to just get rid of this. So the whole Whoville thing, right? You know, I saw curves and Christmas trees. Uh, where was it? Yeah. Uh, when I see it, Whoville blooms, right? You know, some of the great work people have done is really interesting curves to the trees and everything's all a bit wonky and wacky. And that's why this organic style, I think could work really well. And the, the third option, which I'll do is I'll actually, um, Save this whole thing, B, so I can load up the cloud later. And, oops, didn't save it. Anyway, we can quickly read this. Create an option C with cloud. Save your work, people. So I could just copy what I had before, but doing this, I'm just creating a completely different shape. Mm. 
This, this time I'm going to go for a bit thinner, a garland. Just see what it looks like. Not too worried about positioning the balloons right now. Whoops. So this, you know, digital copies, digital sketching rather, works perfectly for organics. Not so well for other stuff. If you're gonna make rigid columns, that's a whole nother piece of work. And uh, you know, I, I have done that in the past. I try to avoid it because not so much money in columns these days and uh, takes a long time. Actually, the Balloons Online design tool, we're looking to have a column builder. So that should make it easy. Ah, you. All right. So I might group these together so they're easier to select. Just control G. And now we can just have a bit of play around, right? Up, down, and if I were to do something like this, maybe you know break up the pattern of everything curving against each other. Let's have this curve in the same direction, see what it looks like. Let's make it even a bit longer, thinner. So yeah, even if the client doesn't ask for it, I still love doing these for me. So I can see what it'll look like. And most of the time, if you get a design that, that looks better, which I don't like the way it curves, um, you know, ABC, and even if the client only asked for A, offer them ABC. If you can show them why version C, even though it's double the price, if you can, if you can show them why um, uh, there's value there, they'll spend the money. They'll they'll get excited by it. All right. So what I could do now is. Make a green one that's very different. And I could maybe copy this and make it that rose, put it down the back. So now you know, what we're going here is just sort of garland at different starting points that are, you know, whatever, right? Just a concept right now. I don't know how I feel about it, but it's, you know, it's good to just sort of see what it looks like. Mm -hmm. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so let's export that one. Not my favorite. And let's be cool. And let's now play around with 
perhaps a starting point being common. And perhaps uh, we're starting large. So the whole thing is a single taper. Or you can see just how different that look is. And to me, this, this, this probably works a little better, actually. It just seems to have more of like a, an order to it, being a single starting common starting point. Kind of like a big set of octopus almost, isn't it? So the point is you can just really build off what you've worked on, what you've created to date. And uh, it's pretty quick. And I'm a terrible sketcher. <laughs> Depth, let's sort of make the back ones a little smaller. Back, that even further back, and make this guy noticeably bigger as if it's coming towards us. say that's probably my favorite visually um, but it's up to the client you know we've given them a couple of options now and you do this for hours okay Save that as our, might say the original, option C. Cool. Now what I like to do as well, now whenever is uh, I can just load them. One, two, three. Right, you can just see how different that is and what strikes you. That to me, I don't know, it's not too bad, option B. Anyway, great, look, that's, uh, I'll stop talking. <laughs> Adobe Illustrator is a program I use um, and I hope there are some fun little tips. Um, once again, you can use it in any bit of software or, or you can sketch it, you know, the whole point is here. Um, visual aids for your quotes. 
Um, well, actually, why don't we use this as an opportunity to give a plug to the Balloons Online Design Tool, which um, you can go to www.balloons.com.au forward slash tools. Click here to start and you can design uh, all kinds of different things. All right, guys, have a lovely day.